The most controversial release in the history of League of Legends would have to go to Seraphine, a champion who by all accounts was a PR nightmare if we go by how poorly she was received in her champion spotlight. The backlash surrounding her debut was for a multitude of reasons, but a major one was that, to many, her place in the actual game gave the impression of what another champion could have been, as evident by the similarities between their movesets and even theme. That other champion was Sona. At the time, it was understandable for someone to think like that. If you glance briefly at each one, it wouldn't be too big of a stretch to say Seraphine was ripping off Sona. But roughly two years have passed since the former's release, and everyone has somewhat accepted that the two are in fact able to coexist, or at the very least, they stop caring about it. Personally speaking, while I'm against Seraphine's overall concept and theme sharing the same opinions as most others, I actually think her gameplay is tangentially more distinct from Sona's than others are giving her credit for. So how about we put that to the test, through a good old champion versus episode. Today's duel is a contest between Sona and Seraphine. But in the spirit of Seraphine and Sona's new Star Guardian skins that came out a while ago, I'm back with my anime-related sponsors, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako, and in the spirit of this coming October, we got some Halloween-themed stuff. Tokyo Treat's theme is spooktacular snacking, filled with, if it wasn't obvious already, Halloween-themed stuff like sweet potato Kit Kats, Halloween Toronto caramel corn, and a maple pumpkin-flavored Tokyo layer loaf. My sister was with me while recording this, and she stole all the snacks because I actually didn't know this, but she's a big fan of Tokyo Tree and Sakura Ko, who knew? <laughs> Speaking of Sakura Ko, their theme this month is the Ibaraki Harvest. Ibaraki is a prefecture northeast of Tokyo, well known for being a major agricultural center, and they packed in stuff like a chestnut karinto, benizuma sweet potato cake, and an Ibaraki blueberry mantu. Also, for those of you curious about natto, they have a panrito natto snack included among other things. And once again, the main difference between Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko, if you only want to purchase one, is that the former has more popular snacks while the latter focuses on products that are based from certain cultures and areas of Japan. So feel free to choose one or the other, or both. As usual, if you use my code VARS, you get 5 bucks off your first Sakura Ko or Tokyo Treat box. Links are also down in the description for you to use as well. Thanks again to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back to Seraphine vs Sona. Unlike previous episodes where the champions are directly involved in each other's lore, Seraphine and Sona have no canonical relationship from a narrative standpoint. This will be the first time I compare two champions purely on the basis of gameplay and not their actual lore, although that's usually the focal point of this series anyway. If this is your first time watching a versus video on my channel, the basic premise is that I'll be comparing each side's abilities, playstyles, synergies, properties, strengths, weaknesses, and more before making a final decision on which one was designed better or which one is stronger. Depending on when you watch this, either champion will be performing statistically better than the other, be it a higher win rate, pick rate, if they were recently buffed or nerfed, etc. So while I plan to go over their individual capabilities, it won't take their current state in the meta into consideration. Though historically, Sona and Seraphine have been on the same level playing field for as long as I can remember. Sona was one of League's earliest champions, released on September 21st, 2020 as an enchanter support, at a time when the only ones preceding her were Soraka and Janna. Despite being a healing and shielding support as well, what separated her from those who came before and those who came after was a straightforward yet influential gimmick, Auras. Depending on which ability Sona presses, she would provide a supplementary boost to surrounding allies based on the ability. Him of Valor is her primary damaging tool, and the Aura would boost her team's damage. Aria of Perseverance is her main defensive spell, healing herself and the nearest wounded ally while the Aura grants all friendlies beside her a shield. Song of Solarity is her main utility spell, providing a movement speed boost to herself and nearby allied champions. The essence of her gameplay revolves around making liberal use of her various auras to not only back up her teammates but charge up her power cord to further increase her supportive capabilities. On the other hand, Seraphine is one of League's newest champions, having been released just over 10 years later on October 29th, 2020. In an effort to provide more flexibility, Seraphine was designed as a support who moonlights as a solo lane mage if need be. Like Sona, Seraphine's basic abilities have a gimmick to them. In this case, she's able to double cast any of them by way of her passive, and they gain additional properties when done in this way. Surround Sound on its own is a team-wide shield and movement speed buff for a short period of time, but if she herself already has a shield when casted, Surround Sound triggers a redemption-like effect, healing herself in nearby allied champions. As for Beat Drop, at base, it slows all enemies hit by a massive amount. If the wave strikes anyone already slowed, they become rooted instead, but if the wave hits anyone already immobilized or grounded, such as a root, they get stunned instead. Going off of this alone, as mentioned before, it's not unreasonable for one to believe Seraphine's kit resembles her predecessor almost too closely, but after playing alongside and against each of them for a long time, I don't think it's necessarily fair to write them off as clones of each other, as much as I and many others have done in the past. By that logic, Karma and Sona are the same exact champion because both of them can shield their entire team and provide them with a surge of speed, or Nami and Sona are the same for having a wave-like ultimate that inflicts hard CC. But in order to convince you further, let's evaluate the two based on the following categories. Damage, Neutral, Mobility, Defense, Solo, Team, Fight, Utility, and Consistency. 
Sona and Seraphine are the first enchanters to be featured in this series, as opposed to TPS champions of the ones prior, so I condensed TPS and burst into a single category while adding neutral to the mix. Neutral entails that while a champion is able to maintain pressure without directly engaging their opponent. For example, someone like Leona has a poor neutral game since the only way she can use her abilities is by charging at the enemy team head first, whereas someone like Zara does a fantastic neutral since he's able to free fire while staying far out of reach from the enemy team most of the time. I should probably clarify that neutral doesn't have to involve combat. Soraka has a powerful neutral game on account of being able to sustain her team out of combat. Make sense? Okay, let's get started. It should come as no surprise that enchanters aren't famous for their offensive pressure. The main focus of the class is to provide utility and defensive pressure instead. But Seraphine has an advantage in this department, as she has very respectable damage output thanks to having three damaging abilities, one of which hurts like a truck when double casted. If she manages to layer everything on multiple enemies at once, not only are they going to be chain CC'd for up to 3 seconds, but they'll be eating just as much punishment from her as they would a fully dedicated mage like Syndra, Vladimir, etc. Case in point, Seraphine has more than enough DPS to cover your AP slot if the rest of the team wants to go physical. Sona does have her fair share of damage, but it's nowhere near the level of Seraphine's. Even if she were to go full AP and use only Power Core Staccato, the lack of area coverage outside of Crescendo makes her damage ceiling far worse in comparison. Seraphine's ability to single-handedly decide the outcome of a fight with a good combo rotation puts her on par with control mages like Rumble and Denivia. There's simply no contest. Now, deciding on who has a stronger neutral game really depends on what you value more since both of them are amazing in this department for contrasting reasons. Sona's neutral is among the strongest out of the entire cast, as she's one of the few champions in the game with the ability to heal allies without engaging in combat or paying an unsustainable cost. Other healers like Soraka and Yumi are more finite in how frequently they can use their stuff. Soraka has to expend her own health, while Yumi's heal eats up a percentage of her maximum mana, so stacking tier and the like isn't as effective on her. Moreover, Sona's Hymn of Valor gives her very strong harass in lane, and during the mid to late game, Song of Solarity increases her entire team's tempo to a point where they're guaranteed to outpace the enemy team in every situation. Seraphine, on the other hand, is well regarded for her offensive neutral. She can spam high note and beat drop very often to wear down opponents without having to engage all in, and she also has a tempo and healing base spell. It is a far cry from Sona's though, as Surround Sound has a 20 second cooldown rank 1 that doesn't get much better by rank 5. Moreover, she needs an existing shield on her to get the healing off, although said healing is massive if she uses it with all four teammates next to her. All things considered, it's circumstantial. In some cases, you want that poke damage to zone off enemies or chip away at them without having to risk an all-in fight. In other cases, you can't put a price on that kind of healing and consistent tempo. No matter how much damage your team sustains, as long as they're alive, Sona can and will heal it back up. She just needs time. So ultimately, I decided to go with even for this one. On the subject of tempo, Sona wins out in mobility. Once again, Song of Solarity is way more consistent than Surround Sound, and it gets even more consistent the longer a match goes on due to Sona's power cord stacking. With sufficient enough ability haste, Sona's E cooldown can drop as low as 6 seconds, and the scaling is also way stronger. 14% base plus 2% per 100 AP compared to Seraphine's 8% base plus 1.6 per 100 AP, and it's flat movement speed versus decaying. I know I said I wouldn't go into time-sensitive numbers, but on paper, Sona's mobility is by and large superior to Sarah's. There's really no one else in the entire roster who can achieve the same level of increased tempo as Sona, not without external support like Shirelia's battle song. Even then, Sona can just take Shirelia's herself to match yours. The only one who comes close is Karma, and hers is dependent on Mantra. A lot of people attribute Sona's amazing late game to her spammable healing and shielding, which is a part of it, but the ability to accelerate your team's rotation speed so easily is criminally underrated by a lot of players. Defense would also have to go towards Sona. Unlike other enchanters who can really only protect one person at a time in most situations, Sona can shield everyone with a single use of her W, and she can use that W many times throughout a teamfight, blocking several hundreds in damage every time. While a single cast of Sona's W loses out to a single empowered cast of Seraphine's W, the shield is sufficient enough to buy Sona's team enough time for her to get the second one up really soon, provided she herself doesn't get bursted. However, Seraphine deserves a mention for having a stronger disadvantage state, meaning she's able to respond a lot more efficiently if the enemy team attacks first. Not only because of Surround Sound's massively stronger heal, but also through Beat Drop and Encore, providing up to 3 seconds of hard CC, twice the duration of Sona's 1.5. You have a stronger chance of surviving a Malphite Yasuo burst combo with Seraphine than you do Sona if we go by raw numbers alone. Seraphine's offense can be used as defense in teamfights, not so much as Sona. On to Solo, that is without question Seraphine. There have been instances in the past where Sona mid or Sona top was viable, but the only reason that ever happened was because Sona was overbuffed. She's almost completely worthless by herself. Seraphine, on the other hand, is a piece of work even by herself. 
She outranges the majority of the cast, which is why she performs so well in mid lane. She can straight up choose not to interact with you directly, permashell waste to scale, and then beat your ass with their Spotify playlist. That's really what the main difference between Sona and Seraphine boils down to. Sona is a more defensive, utility-centric enchanter, while Seraphine is a damage-oriented enchanter. What I find kind of funny is that in her champion spotlight, they marketed her as a mid lane mage who can team up with their allies, but more people use her as a support. I'm personally not sure which one she's better at, considering I think she's just broken in general. Then again, we're not talking about her current balance state. Solo performance goes to Seraphine. Not gonna lie, I was very close to calling a tie for team fighting for the same reason as the neutral category, but after thinking about it some more, I figured when it comes to strictly team fighting, like the act of all five members of both teams engaging head on, and not anything prior, like when both teams are dancing back and forth looking for some dumbass to get caught, then Seraphine wins. Like I said before, Surround Sound isn't as effective of a neutral tool as Aria of Perseverance, but if we go by individual casts, it's more effective overall at handling burst damage, the more prominent form of damage in teamfights. Secondly, Encore plus Beat Drop's area coverage and Chain CC followed by a massive burst of damage with a double cast high note is enough to wipe out entire enemy teams by yourself. Additionally, not only is it a good counter engage tool, but it's a good follow up as well. If you have someone else on the team who can lead the charge, that only makes Seraphine's teamfight pressure even better. Sona's crescendo is admittedly way faster than Sarah's encore, but it's cancelled out by having an overall shorter duration and more importantly range. 1000 units is a lot mind you, but she may struggle to hit the enemy backline, which are more preferable targets than the frontline tanks with this type of move. Make no mistake, Sona's team fighting is excellent, I'm by no means implying she isn't a valuable asset to her team in full blown 5v5s. But in this game, the best defense is a strong offense, and Seraphine's offense can be overwhelming in the right conditions. For utility, it depends on what is more important to you. I sound like a broken record at this point, but you cannot find anyone else who can sustain their team and give them increased tempo for an extended period of time the way Sona can. And no, before you say Yumi or Lulu, they can only do it to one person at a time, even though it looks like they can support everyone. The only other who can somewhat contest Sona's team wide utility is the most fabulous motherfucker in existence, and even he struggles to hold the candle to her. That being said, what Seraphine has that Sona doesn't is crowd control. Sona's only hard CC is tied to Crescendo. It's a very powerful hard CC, but in the end, it's no more Gana Q or Blitzhook. Sarah's beat draw technically only counts as hard CC if you double cast it, but when she gets Rylice, a single wave can become a root as it applies the Rylice slow before the beat drop. So a double cast with Rylice means an AoE 1 and a quarter second stun on a 10 second cooldown. Not bad at all. Crowd control is extremely important. In the early to mid game, I would prefer access to lockdown, but in the late game, that changes to movement speed and sustain, so let's chalk this up to a tie. Last but not least, we have consistency. This one's a given. Sona. Aside from timed usage of power cord, there's no way you can mess up on Sona. Literally, no way you can mess up on Sona. Press Q, press W, press E, and stuff happens. Mechanically, it doesn't get any simpler than that. There's nothing inconsistent within Sona's kit. Seraphine, on the other hand, can be very inconsistent. Encore can either be the single most broken team fight ability in the game, or it can miss completely if your teammates don't extend the hitbox for you. Beat drop is conditional and also kinda slow. Surround sound requires an existing shield on top of her for the heal, and if you have someone else who can tag her with a shield like, say, Ivern, you don't have to waste your double cast. But that's only if Ivern is smart enough to know that you want to press W right then and there. In her defense, Sarah is objectively very dependable, but between the two, not even close. Sona is hyper consistent. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. If we tally up the score, Seraphine wins in damage, solo and team fight, while Sona wins in mobility, defense, and consistency, and they tie in neutral and utility. Thing is, that's just how they are. Sona and Seraphine are both equally good. I remember everyone was talking about how Sarah was an infinitely better version of Sona, and admittedly I was one of them, but in reality, no. They're good for different reasons. In fact, ironically, Seraphine and Sona are amazing when put together. At one point or another, you've witnessed the terror of a Sarah Sona duo bot. Unless your team gets like a 10,000 gold lead by 10 minutes or as a team with a metric ton of explosive hard engaged bursts, if they survive until 3 items each, you lose. I don't care who you are, even the almighty 2 million years that is Yone cannot stop Sarah Sona bot. I've seen it. Despite all of us saying Seraphine is gonna kill Sona back then, these two are actually perfect for each other. Sona gives Seraphine a shield by existing, which allows her to get her surround sound heal off all the time. Seraphine's encore draws all enemies together in a tight spot and closer to them so that Sona can tag all of them with crescendo. The two of them get along famously. I can't really say that one is better than the other because they're good for different things. In essence, Sona and Seraphine are evenly matched as champions because they both complement one another, both in design and performance. But what do you guys think? Do you believe Seraphine is better designed or Sona? Let me know in the comments down below. We're gonna add things off here, so if you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you left a like and subscribed. Consider following me on Twitter, at VarsVerum, joining my Discord server, and checking out my previous versus episodes if you haven't yet. But till next time, as always, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.